Morning. Beautiful Saturday here in western Kentucky. Just getting the KX-161 warmed up here on the trailer. And we're back at the job with the long driveway. And we're going to get this uh, third culvert installed. Well, it'll be the second one I've installed, but the third one in this driveway. So here's the ditch that I dug previously going up the side of this. I fixed this driveway here. And that's all the dirt I spread out from digging this ditch. And here is the pipe we're gonna replace. That's the outlet side. And the inlet is over here. Let's go down and take a look at it. Things are a little bit drier now. It hasn't rained in a while, but this soil just holds a lot of moisture. So that there looks to be a, maybe a 15 inch pipe. It's cracked and halfway collapsed. But the thing is, it's got a lot of cover on it. I know you, it's probably hard to see there, but it's got at least three foot, maybe three and a half foot of cover on top of it. So we're gonna put a two foot pipe in there. I'll probably raise it up a little bit. It's probably a little bit lower than it needs to be, especially on this end. And uh, then I'm gonna rip wrap this whole area here. We've got a ditch coming in from this side, a ditch coming in from this side, and you know this slope going down into here too. So we'll get riprap placed all around this for the inlet protection and same thing with the outlet to keep it from washing out. I had the materials here from last time I was on this job. I was gonna do this um, the same time I did the other two pipes down there, but uh, my back kinda was giving me problems so I decided to wait a week or two. So it's about a half load of 57s, probably about 14 tons maybe. And there's 30 foot of 24 inch dual wall HDPE pipe. And about a half load of riprap, maybe, I don't know, eight, 10 tons of riprap there too.
Well, I forgot my rake. So, gotta use a shovel. Makes a little bit more work. All right, I got the dirt packed in here pretty good. So it's ready to get riprap going around it. So unfortunately the pile is all the way over there. I'm bringing it over with the skid and dump it around a bit and then move it around a little bit more with the excavator. I'm gonna try that. If that doesn't work out too good, then I'll bring it and pile it up here and then place it with the excavator. But it's all looking really nice. I'm really happy with how it's coming out.
Okay, well, had some battery troubles, so the uh, camera didn't get to catch all this. But you can see here, we got the riprap placed around the pipe and going most of the way up the hill and also getting that little spout there, which has a little uh, drainage ditch coming through. Nice coverage around this pipe. And going up that way a little ways, so everything coming into here will be nice and protected before it goes into the pipe. And nice backfill in there so far. And here's the outlet. Nice and protected coming out here. And I also put quite a bit up here on this top here because we're gonna have some water coming down this side here and kind of going through this low area here. So last thing I gotta do is I've got a little bit more rock over there. I'm gonna take that, spread it out in this driveway here. And then that dirt, I'm gonna spread out over that rock pile to kind of just uh, make that you know where grass will grow back again instead of having rock there and spread a little bit else out wherever i need to here and then finish grading i kind of spread this out to dry it was some more mud that came out of this uh trench here or the ditch and uh, i got that drying out in the wind and sun and we'll go ahead and smooth all this up a little bit before we go and any other spots you know there's a little bit in here and whatnot that just needs a little back dragging with the bucket but nothing major That is it. The road looks real nice. All right, well, um, otherwise, down on the other end, I did a little bit more work down there too. Just some of the spots that I'd graded out when it was muddy, I just smoothed out a little bit and made them look nicer. Um, went over the driveway one more time just to get rid of any bumps and ruts. And this should be the last time I'm uh, on this job with any equipment. As I pull out of this driveway here, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, excavator I'm selling. It's the KX161 that I've been uh, working on. I've got a couple videos of um, some stuff in the workshop I've been doing to get it fixed up good. But um, the reason I'm selling it is I actually am selling this large 12,000 pound excavator and my small 6,500 pound excavator. And I bought a new, um, well, new to me, uh, five ton excavator, 10,000 pound machine. It's the KX040. It's actually about 9,400 pounds, but um, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I'm super excited. That machine should be here tomorrow. And uh, like I said, there was supposed to be a guy that was going to get this excavator today here from this job, but did not show up. So um, I'm taking it back to the house and there's another guy who's going to be coming to look at it tomorrow. And then the small machine, I've already gotten a deposit on it and that guy is coming Monday to get the small machine. So I'm um, excited, nervous, <laughs> but uh, it'll be nice just to go down to one machine where I'm not having to maintain and store and clean and everything else with two machines. So the only thing I'm looking for now is I need a bigger trailer to be able to haul the 
you know, 9,500 pound excavator and my uh, 3,600 pound skid steer. So that gets it about, you know, 14,000 pounds, maybe a little more with a couple attachments. And um, I'm on the lookout for like a 24 foot bumper pole with some torsion, like 10,000 pound axles and 16 ply tires. Hard trailer to find, but um, I'm gonna keep my eye out. Other option is to go with a gooseneck, which, you know, is nice. I just, it's so much easier to hook up to a bumper pole, you know, if you just got a one day job or something short. Um, and bumper poles are lower and I've, I'm better at backing in with a bumper pole than a gooseneck. I know I'd learn with a gooseneck, but I don't know. I'm just making excuses at this point. Um, I also like having the bed space with a bumper pole. You can see I put a bunch of that old pipe in the uh, bed for the trip home here. So it's nice to have that uh, rather than having a you know trailer sticking in your bed. Anyway, I'd like to hear your guys' opinions on it. I know the gooseneck would probably pull better for what I do, but uh, I don't know. Let's hear what you guys got to say. Appreciate watching, and I'll respond in the comments. Thank you.